cart before the horse. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. In our last video we talked about how the enemy is extremely busy right now drawing attention to the Shiloh prophecy and the prophecy that goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. They know what time it is, they know what prophecy is in play right now, and they are extremely busy right now drawing attention to their disciples to this time, to this border time. As a watchman ministry, we've been very vigilant in watching the enemy and trying to understand why they are picking certain times and certain emphasis and certain messages. And we have been looking at the border, trying to get an understanding of the border and the understanding of the feet too as well. We've been on a learning journey, digging and trying to find out more about this time and the prophecy, which the enemy definitely seems to tip their hat that they strongly know this is in play right now. And we've been trying to get an understanding of the two conditions. There's two conditions listed in this prophecy. That the scepter will not depart from Judah, which we take as the larger constellation, but then also a lawgiver from between his feet. So it's not going to depart from Judah, nor from between the feet. And in our booklet we talk about how the scepter and the lawgiver have the same identity. They're both encapsulated in Jupiter, the representation of the scepter and the lawgiver. And right now that is just past the internationally recognized border. And we've been focusing on that. And in my last video, as I was recording it, it kind of struck me that we've been so focused on the border lately that we've forgotten and overlooked the other condition, which comes before the border condition. And I mentioned this in the previous video of how if Jupiter is still in the feet, then obviously it has not crossed the border yet. And we've been focusing on the border so much that we've forgotten the first condition that has to be checked because that will ultimately determine if it has crossed the border at all. So let's look at some prophecy logic. Obviously, we're trying to determine about Jupiter, its location in this portrayal and rehearsal in the heavens, in the lights in the firmament, which are given as signs. And so the question we need to ask with Jupiter and these conditions is, first of all, has it departed the feet? That needs to be the first question. And we need to come back to that. Has it departed the feet? Instead of asking, has it departed the border yet? We need to first ask, has it departed the feet? If the answer is yes, then obviously the next question is, then has it left the border? We would check the border after we confirm that it has departed the feet. And if it has left the border, it has also left the feet. And so the prophecy is therefore not valid anymore because those two conditions in the proper order were not met. And if it hasn't left the border yet, then the prophecy is still valid. And with the thin space that we see here between the hind leg and the border, they're pretty much the same. So if it hasn't left the border yet, then there's a high degree that it is still within the hind feet. So if it hasn't left the border yet, the prophecy is still valid. And going back to the first condition, if it hasn't departed the feet yet, and the answer is no, then it must be within the border because it's still within Judah to be in the feet. So again, the prophecy is still valid in that situation. And we've gotten a little off track because we've been so focused on the border, we have completely forgotten the other condition, which comes first. We do need to consider, has it departed the feet first? And then determine the border after that. So we also talked about how we should be able to make a case. We should be able to present evidence in court for our case. You know, not just conjecture, not just me saying it, but be able to present astronomical information backing up our story that these two conditions are still valid. So let's make our case today. Let's examine this. And in doing so, I think we're going to find why the enemy is also looking exactly at this time too as well. So let's enter for Exhibit A, this celestial chart, and notice how the border is drawn around Leo at that time. And this was one reason why they were having a big push to have an internationally recognized standard because it was so chaotic. But notice how it was just really cut around the concept of what the constellation encapsulated, the concept of it and the stars that belong to it as well. But the border followed the concept, and so this is what we need to determine first. Is it still within the feet? Is it still between the hind legs? And if so, then it is still within the boundaries of the concept. So we see that illustrated here. So we're going to use this for Exhibit A, this chart for Exhibit B, this chart for Exhibit C, and again, this one also has another chaotic border, which is different from the other one. 
and then this one for exhibit D. And we're all going to compare it to the internationally recognized star charts that are used today for the borders so we can get a concept between the averages of the borders and the concepts and get an idea of both conditions together. Not focusing on one to the exclusion of the other, but we need a new chart that takes into consideration both borders and the concepts. So when we zoom in on the chart to the area that we're most interested in right now, and I removed some textual information that would just be distracting at this point. So this is going to be our baseline. Right here is the path that Jupiter is taking right now between the two constellations, our main focus. And then here is Exhibit A overlaid. And I try to match them up as most as I can, particularly to the area we are looking at now. But all these charts have slightly different projections and also trying to line them up with this particular star chart, which is slightly skewed anyway. It's a little difficult, but I am trying to line up the major points of it, bring it close. We're going to be looking at an average, so we're going to get it as close as I can without wasting too much time. But if we just outline the hind leg where we're focusing right now, and then we'll also make a note of their border that they drew with this particular artwork. And notice that it comes up to Virgo, slightly apart from the leg, but comes right up to Virgo. So we'll just include that as a reference from Exhibit A. And again, here is the modern internationally recognized border. So we could see just with this chart, Jupiter, which is right now past the modern international borders, it's still well right smack in the middle of the hind legs. It's still between the feet. So the prophecy is still valid just from this view and still going to be in quite a while. But you can see also that it's in a prime time. It's right in the middle of this concept. So let's keep going forward. Exhibit B. And one thing you'll find with all this artwork is I was surprised at the similarities, how closely they were all together. So let's outline that one. Now leg, very similar location. And just going by this artwork, we could see that the scepter is in between the feet still. It's still valid. And this piece of artwork doesn't have an extra border. So let's go on to Exhibit C. Overlay that. And then we'll outline its leg, which is almost exactly like some of the other artwork. And it appears that the artwork and concepts of it were very similar. So we are finding a very strong average and understanding of the hind leg is almost in the exact same spot. And again, by this one, still definitely within the hind foot. This one does have an extra border to as well, so when you add that in, that's similarly approximately close to the other one, but again, still in between the hind leg and Virgo. And then here's the modern border again, still right in the middle of the legs. And we can start to see an idea of we're right in between the concept of the modern international border but also the other averages of the border too. We are in a prime time between all three concepts, the borders and the leg concepts too as well. And then exhibit D. And we outline that one there too. So now we have four case examples from real astronomy charts giving us an idea of very closely the average of the hind leg. What is conceptually the hind leg and we could see that we are in prime time territory with it right now. Still has some good time ahead of it too as well. But then the modern internationally recognized border is right in the middle of all this too as well. So let's do an overlay of Exhibit A, Exhibit B, Exhibit C, and Exhibit D. And this kind of gives us a heat map concentration average. And we could see subtly that it's thickest right around where we are now. And so the average of the hind legs is where we are right now for a little bit after it too as well. We are in a prime time right now. By blurring all these averages, we could see that we can still make a strong case that we are in the average of the hind legs right now in between the feet. And obviously, if we're still in the feet, then we have not crossed the border yet of Judah either. And here it is without those other borders for reference as well. There is a gap between the hind legs and Virgo, so we have to keep that in mind. But we find the average of the international borders is right at the average middle of the hind leg concept too as well. So this is a prime time, and we could start to see why the enemy is so focused on this part right now. And then if we overlay all the line data again, that gives us another conceptual view of it all, how it all blends together. 
and again blurring together the data for boundaries but also the concepts of the hind leg what has been recognized and evidentially recognized as the hind leg area and we could also see between the modern international border and Virgo's head, you could almost draw a line halfway between both of those as an average possible border of where the hind leg would end, an average, because some are a little closer, some are a little farther away. But you could definitely make a strong case that between the international border and Virgo's head is an average border where the hind feet would end and where you could say a boundary of Judah would start. And if we erase half of the boundary legs just to give us an idea of the one side of the boundary, we can see it's in that average area there. So we're still within the hind legs, and which means we're still in Judah, and we'll be for a little bit more. So if we take this data and we go back to the calendar, and we just kind of compare it, we could see partially why they're so focused right now at this peak time where the international border does come through because it is the average between the two constellations just going by the stars. It is the average point right there. But we can also see from our radar check that it's also the average of the concept too as well with a little bit of playroom. And then approximately between now and the 26th when it would enter Virgo, the constellation, we could see Jupiter would be reaching an average hind feet edge right around the 18th and 19th. You can make a good case for that. So again, we can see where we are right now, the 11th and 12th prime time territory. We can see why the enemy is so busy right now. And I suspect that one reason they also picked this time is this is when the sun is also entering Leo, which means it's leaving its previous chamber. So we have the additional symbolism on top of the Shiloh sign. We have the additional symbolism and picture of the Son of Righteousness coming out of his chamber, which reminds us of the Psalm 19 passage, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. So right now, at this prime time where we are right now, just passing the border, still within the hind feet area, still within Judah, we have, in addition to the Shiloh sign, we also have the sun entering the constellation Leo, which is the picture of the bridegroom coming out of his chamber. So we have multiple pictures coming together right now, and it truly is amazing. And this is probably why the enemy has picked this particular small window, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, when the sun is coming into the picture as well as their particular focus. So we see right now it's the peak time for the fulfillment of this Shiloh passage. Now, I've assembled several of the sheets that we've just gone through in a Shiloh Radar Check PDF that is now on our Google Drive, so you can download it and double-check it. You know, this is proof. The Bible says prove all things. So we are making a case that we are still well within the feet, still well within Judah. And so download it, print it out, examine it yourself. Link is in the description box. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Serve Christ first and highest above all else. Maranatha.